Hello, I'm James Galloway. I'm a professor of rheumatology at King's College London and also King's College Hospital NHS Foundation Trust. I have a clinical and research interest in sarcoidosis and I'm going to talk to you today about the musculoskeletal manifestations of sarcoid. There is no doubt sarcoid is a complex condition and, and it has an enormous variation in how it can affect people. In fact, in, in some people it is a mild, short-lived illness that persists for just a few months. Whilst in other people, it can become a long-term condition that can persist throughout a lifetime. It's important when we think about the musculoskeletal symptoms, we actually separate out those different forms because the way it can affect the joints um, does differ. In fact, the most common form of musculoskeletal involvement of sarcoid occurs in a, a form called Lofgren syndrome. This is a variant of sarcoid that's often seasonal, slightly more common around springtime, and it occurs characteristically with an onset of swelling around the ankles, the appearance of tender, painful nodules down the shins, and then swelling and enlargement of the lymph glands. And in over 9 out of 10 people who develop that, it is a self-limiting illness that will resolve entirely over a period of several months. That, that is the most common form of musculoskeletal involvement in sarcoid, and Actually, in long-term sarcoid, we know that only about a third of people have musculoskeletal symptoms driven by the disease. Let me talk to you a bit about the long-term sarcoid and how it can affect the joints. And it's important to say at the start that musculoskeletal pain is incredibly common even in people without sarcoid. And so an important step in understanding this with patients who have sarcoid is to recognise that not all musculoskeletal aches and pains will be driven by the sarcoid and separating that out is important because pain that is due to another condition such as osteoarthritis or fibromyalgia will not respond to escalating treatments for the sarcoid because they aren't being driven by the same process. So understanding in someone who has musculoskeletal pain whether this is due to the sarcoid or something else is an important step. That is often tricky to do. It requires usually a combination of understanding and listening the symptoms someone has experienced, pairing that up with laboratory tests and then imaging. Maybe an ultrasound, MRI scan or even a PET scan. In terms of musculoskeletal symptoms, well, it is definitely possible that some people who have musculoskeletal involvement won't have any symptoms. Some people may be told, based on a PET scan result, that they have evidence of sarcoid in the bones or joints which they, they were not aware of. That's not uncommon. But for people that do experience symptoms, the symptoms are usually characterised by a combination of pain, swelling and stiffness, a reduction in the range of movement in the joint. What people often will notice is it's also not just the joint itself that's affected, but also the tendon structures surrounding the joint. How to manage it? Well, it is dependent on the symptom severity and we always would start with conservative and less toxic treatments first. So topical pain relief such as a topical anti-inflammatory gel available from the, the chemist over the counter is a very sensible start. Even people who don't tolerate oral anti-inflammatories often still find they can tolerate the topical treatments very well. Oral pain relief, such as an anti-inflammatory, naproxen or ibuprofen, are reasonable options for short-term management of symptoms, but in the long term they can have side effects, particularly causing in intolerance in the, in the stomach, can cause stomach ulcers over time. So it's very important, long-term pain relief is always done in combination with a physician or, or primary care doctor to ensure that that is, that is kept an eye on, because long-term use is not usually a good idea. Physiotherapy is also really important. If you have an inflamed joint and you stopped using it, the muscles surrounding that joint become weaker and that makes the joint less stable over time. So doing physiotherapy is really important. And actually, paradoxically, when a joint is inflamed, keeping the muscles active is really important. It does mean you need to learn ways of training those muscles which aren't putting the same strains through the joint, but using the joints is really important. And then finally, Therapies that we have that treat the sarcoid also will help treat inflammation. So if the joint and muscle symptoms are due to the sarcoid, then 
then treating the sarcoid will help reduce the inflammation and improve symptoms. And it is true that for across the spectrum of the drugs we most commonly use for sarcoid, such as prednisolone, methotrexate, or biologic therapies like infliximab, all have an excellent track record for treating the inflammation in the musculoskeletal system. Indeed, if you look at methotrexate and infliximab, they were first described in the context of autoimmune disease as treatments for rheumatoid arthritis, another form of inflammation within the musculoskeletal system. It does highlight how sarcoid is a complex disease, it affects many parts of the body, and so having a team that look after you that understand that is really important. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been of insight.